for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff at the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a Mad 24 video for you guys today. Today, the gameplay deep dive came out uh, from Mad 24, but it wasn't really a deep dive as I, like I was expecting. I went on their Twitch and I went on their Twitter and all kind of stuff, and I couldn't find like a live stream like I was expecting. Instead, it was just another trailer. It was like a five minute trailer that really didn't give you a ton of information. And if you just watch the five minute trailer, you're not really getting the full story. I actually have a really comprehensive article here from Game gaming trend that I'm going to cross reference to the trailer to give you guys more in-depth stuff for what really got changed in the game because the trailer really just looked like another trailer it didn't look like anything different really changed but as always if you guys want to see more videos like this please make sure to be subscribed hit the like button in the comment section other than that let's go let's get right into the video now the first thing that they go over is to hit everything 2.0 which is essentially expanding the concept where originally you know they introduced this thing in Madden 23 where when you know you got these contested catches with receivers uh, and that's really you know you get locked in a one-on-one -on -one battle when the DB and the receiver are both going up for the ball now you just have more control to do that all over the field guys crossing the field on slants curls whatever that's basically what they're saying uh, it, but what I take from this is that you can essentially remove receivers from the ball or move the ball from receivers more often which is going to be something that's going to be a huge win for the defense that's one of the things i think that you're going to see from this trailer from this video and from madden 24 in general is they're giving a lot to the defense because last year's defense wasn't really good now something that wasn't shown in the trailer or they really didn't mention at all in this five minute trailer was that they're changing a a tackle concept entirely uh from conservative tackle which if you guys don't know is hitting a on xbox or X on PlayStation. Uh, last year, that didn't really work at all. That was like a broken feature. And I, I've been using that for years. And it seemed like every time I used conservative tackle in Madden 23, it resulted in a missed tackle. So I'm glad they're getting rid of that. But they're changing that function now to something called a wrap tackle. So I could go two ways on this. If this is actually a new implemented function, it'll probably be the best way to tackle in Madden 24. If it's just a repackaged name of a function that was already in the game, then it's going to be just as broken as it was last year, most likely. After that, they go over a bunch of new animations, 1,700 tackling animations, new scoop tackles, all that stuff I really don't care about. They talk about how um, smaller defenders will now be more likely to go for the leg zone ball carries. Big guys will wrap up more, and really big guys might drive a guy back. The next thing that they go over is uh, the skill-based passing improvements, and they start with uh, showing how receivers will run through the ball better for better catch and runs which is something that I mentioned a lot in Madden 23 that was an issue in my gameplays is a lot of times guys would slow down for balls. Well, now it looks like they're going to be more consistently running through and not losing acceleration. They say that they're not going to lose acceleration. But it also showed a really dumb animation. Like they In Madden 23... The animations a lot of times were like these outstretched arms barely catching up to the ball and it looked really cool. Where this one here, it just looks like he was sprinting and he put his arms straight up and I didn't really care for the animation. So if the animations were the problem, which is why guys were slowing down, which is what I feel like it was, if the way that they solved that was by removing the animations... I mean, I know I'm not a fan of animations. We're all not a fan of animations. But that did help with the immersion of the game. It did look way cooler than this stiff arm sprint of them just putting their hands up and catching the ball. I mean, that doesn't look good. It'll play better probably, but it doesn't look good. So it, we're going to have to see where this falls. The next thing to go over is the new Sapien system, which they're talking about some sort of skeletal system, which makes players look more realistic. What, how I take this is they just put more time into de in developing how players actually look compared to how a lot of them were just kind of lumped together last year. Whether you, if you're an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, you were just like this chubby dude, where now it's like, hey, you know, not everybody that plays offensive line, defensive line is just like some chubby fat guy. And they're actually, you know, making sure these guys' body types fit their real life NFL body types a little bit better but they also say something about how it's going to be smoother animations and stuff like that or smoother gameplay you know, I got to see that to believe that too because we're still going to probably see guys warping to the football and you know stuff like that which we've been seeing for for you know a decade now the next thing to talk about is the improvements to the blocking which has been an issue for a while uh, specifically to run blocking because that's something that they're going to talk about you know a brand new run blocking system but a lot of the stuff they talk about already exists in the game. Like they talk about how 
guys will be able to double team and pull up under the next level and stuff like that. I mean, that's something that's been in the game. I don't know why they're acting like that wasn't in the game. But there are some improvements uh, when it comes to, um, you know, basically open field blocking. These guys are going to target the, the the players that they're supposed to block a lot better, especially when it comes to things like toss plays and sweep plays and, you know, stuff like that, uh, where essentially in the, in the last couple years anyway, I mean, if you go back like 10 years, sweeps and tosses and stuff like that ran the game. But within the last couple of years, the targeting system has been so bad that they would just get lost. They would run out and just, you know, basically block nobody. Where now it looks like linemen are going to actually target players and do a better job of, you know, getting onto those blocks that they're supposed to get onto and create these lanes to the outside, which can go one of two ways. Number one, it should bring back toss plays. It should bring back these type of run plays. But it might make it very difficult to stop these type of plays online. In fact, the uh, if you watch the trailer, some of the examples they show, it they really open up lanes. Like there's nobody around the running back. So if, so if they're, people are running these plays online, it's going to be very difficult uh, to stop these run plays if it's not balanced or if it's as consistent as they're trying to make it sound. Now, this isn't mentioned in the trailer, but in the article that I read after the fact that I'm also re referencing quite a bit throughout this video, it says flat out that elite blockers will stand out more. Highly rated blockers will be more, much more likely to throw dominating blocks when matched up against smaller defenders. So basically what they're saying is, and it says that point blank here, it says tip, be cautious using sub-defensive formations with more DBs on the field to stop run plays with these elite blockers in action. So what they're saying is that you're, you're kind of going back to the weak box system. And when you're watching this trailer and you're seeing guys just get blown up, just getting blown up over and over and over, it's because they're defensive backs. So if you're, you know, if your opponent comes out in a two tight end set or they have, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles have a really good offensive line, you're not going to want to come out in dollar formations all game because you're going to get run over. And that's good because it's realistic. And I, I'm, I'm definitely cool with that. But going back to the, you know, the supposed revamping of toss plays, how are we going to stop those toss plays if a guard or a tackle is pulling out, kicking out on a safety or a cornerback to the outside? They're going to be blowing them up. That's the idea, right? So if this is true, if this is working like they're saying, then it's going to be really difficult to stop these outside run plays because it's difficult to stop outside run plays now. It also says once again that linemen will look for the opportunities to push the pile. So if your running back is out in the flat and there's a lineman around, especially a highly rated lineman the way that they term it in this article, uh, they will be more likely to try to push uh, whoever's carrying the ball you know, past whatever, past the, the goal line, past the first down marker, whatever. So, you know, this is another form of an animation that might annoy people when it pops up. But these are all things that are really designed to make offensive alignment more important because, to be honest, in Madden 23, offensive alignment don't matter. In the last 10 years, offensive alignment don't really matter. But with all these new added functions, it might make offensive alignment more important, and it might make you put more time into selecting your team based off of if they have good alignment or not. It might put more, you know, it puts more emphasis on alignment as a whole, which is important because in real life NFL, the best teams in the league typically have the best offensive lines. Now, another new function is chip blocks, which I really like. It shows uh, Pollard coming out of the backfield and chipping, which is something that they do a lot in the NFL, um, basically helping out in blocking before running their pattern. I'm guessing this will be on check and release type of routes, but we really don't know yet. But at the end of the day, we all know that blocking running back doesn't necessarily help your pass protection. So it'll be nice to have the best of both worlds where your running back can chip on a block and still go out and catch a pass. It then goes on to talk about how playing against the computer will be, uh, you know, how it'll be a little bit better in run offense. The running back has a new system that will help them find holes better. Um, you know, nothing too crazy there. Uh, when it comes to quarterbacks, though, they really seem to be pumping up the fact that quarterbacks are going to be a lot smarter when it comes to making audibles and stuff like that. They're actually going to have traits for AI quarterbacks. They're going to have a conservative trait or they'll have an ideal trait or an aggressive trait. Uh, and, you know, this is basically like your, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes or your Josh Allens and stuff like that. When running the ball against the AI, uh, you'll also notice that if you run the, the same run play over and over, that eventually the defense will pick up on it. And this is based off of how you, uh, you know, whatever skill level you're playing against. If you're playing against 
this rookie, it'll take them a little bit longer. But if you're playing against all Madden, the first time you run a play, they will make adjustments the next time you try to run it. They then go over some improvements to the defensive back AI in coverage. And I don't think this is just going to be in offline mode. I think this is going to be in online mode too. Because they talk about a new function that they added called crossover. They don't talk about this too much in the trailer. This is once again in the article that I'm reading off after the fact. But they, before I get into that, they do say that they're you know trying to change the psychic defender thing. They do show a little segment where the DB's head, I think it's Jair Alexander's head, is facing back at the quarterback. But they've done that in the past. They've said that they've fixed psychic defender several times over the years. So I'm not going to buy that until I actually see it. What I am more interested in, though, is this new crossover function. If you guys don't know, now you have uh, left trigger or L2 is the strafe, right trigger or R2 is the sprint. But apparently if you do them both at the same time, you're going to get something called crossover. This is what the article says anyway. We've added crossover movements that allow the DBs to move at high speeds and still see the ball to make a play on it. So basically... What they're saying is if you hit both, they're going to, you know, face the ball and sprint for the ball at the same time. They then quickly go over something that I think deserves more attention, and that's fumble recoveries and onside kicks. Number one, there really wasn't a fumble, co- fumble recovery animation where a player fumbles the ball and then immediately tries to get it back the way that Russell Wilson did here. This is not a small thing. A lot of times, if a quarterback or a running back fumbles the ball, they just lay there like they just got murdered rather than trying their best to get the ball back, which is really important. It's a really important feature that I'm just, it's amazing to me that it took them so long to add that. Other than that, they've been talking about their onside kick changes where they're trying to make onside kicks a little bit more possible. Um, But I just hope it doesn't go overboard because if it gets to a point where onside kicks are too easy to get, it's going to be very uh, problematic with the online community. Now, the next thing that they go over is the changes to playbooks. And there have been, there are always changes. Every year, there's changes to playbooks. They remove plays. They remove formations. They go from one playbook to another. They swap them around. This year, they say that they added 70-plus new offensive formations that contain 500-plus new plays across all 32 teams. That I don't necessarily believe. I mean, they did definitely add some plays. Some of the plays they showed definitely are new. Uh, but some of the you know some of the plays here are basically just altered or tweaked plays that already existed. Like they show the gun bunch quads close drag under. The gun bunch quads drag under has been in the game for a long time. They changed it to a close because it looks like they just moved the receivers closer to the line of scrimmage, which doesn't make it a new play. It's just basically they altered a play. And I've already heard that the gun tight being so meta last year and such an annoying for so many people, including the gun tight offset TE. I've already heard that those plays, those formations aren't even in the game. They've altered those formations the same way to the point where they're not going to be, they're not going to work the same way. People aren't going to be running that all year long. So that's something to watch out for. They also say that uh, teams, and I've gone over this in previous videos, are going to have um, unique components to their offense based off of how they run it in real life. I already said how the Eagles had a bunch of pistol plays added to their offense, and that's why that's going to be one of the first offenses I hop into because I love pistol formations, uh, stuff like that. So there's going to be a lot of changes to your favorite playbook. And then last but not least, they go over something that's really just supposed to help the immersion of the game, which is the afterplay reactions and emotions that the players show. They added more reactions and emotions because let's be honest they kind of got repetitive in Madden 23 anyway but at the end of the day you're still going to see a lot of the same animations and they don't really if you're playing online I typically skip them I typically don't even care so I'm going to end the video there if you guys want to see more videos like this as always please make sure to be a subscriber hit like button let me know in the comment section if you want to see more Madden 24 videos that I put out in the past I'll have them popping up on screen now so just hit the links as I'm sure they'll uh, give you some more information and that's it thanks for watching man Wish it out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive Exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.